All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be doing my top 10 list of books that I read in 2023. That is my favorite 10 books I read in 2023. Um, perhaps you watched some of my previous top 10 lists, you know, the one from 2022, or maybe the one from 2021. Or maybe you've even watched some of my top 10 mystery novel lists or my top 10 horror novel lists. You know that I have a problem. You know that I have this problem where I can't keep the top 10 list to just 10 books. I mean, I probably read a couple hundred books this year. It was difficult to narrow it down to the top ones. And a lot of these books that I read were some of my favorite novels that I read when I was a kid or some of my favorite novels that I read, you know, every four or five years. They're still going to be in my top 10 just because they're so good. Some of the books on my top 10 list are going to be books that I've read for the first time this year. And it's just hard for me to compile these. You know, and a few years ago, you know, a few years ago, I, in my top 10 reads of the year, I added a couple of honorable mentions. And then the next year, I add a couple more honorable mentions. And so this year, there's going to be a few more honorable mentions. And, you know, like your mom, I just can't control myself. And uh, it's, uh, so let's just get to the top 10 books that I read in the year 2023. Four honorable mentions before we even get to the top 10. I got to have four honorable mentions. Now, each one of these books that I will hold up is a book that I left a detailed review of this book on the channel somewhere. So if you want to see a full-length review of any of these books that I hold up, all you need to do is type in my last name into your YouTube search bar, the title of the book, for instance, Watchers by Dean Koontz. Type those things into the YouTube search bar, and I swear to all that's holy that that video review of the specific book that you typed in to your YouTube search bar, will magically appear upon your television screen or your computer screen or even your phone. I'm not here to judge what you are watching the internet on. I'm just telling you that's the way the internet works. So to get things started in high fashion with the fourth honorable mention before we get to the top ten, I'm holding it up right here. Watchers by Dean Koontz. This is a reread. I read this a long time ago when I was a kid, forgot most everything about it. I reread it this year, and I was riveted to every word. I just loved it. Dean Koontz has a way in most of his books, not all, most of his books of just setting up a great Michael Crichton-esque supernatural, weird-ass thriller situation and then giving you some characters that just go through the plot of the story and it's relentless. It's intense. It never gives up. The plot just keeps moving forward and different things happen, different cliffhangers at the end of every chapter. And that was Watchers. I was actually pleasantly surprised with this reread. This book came out of nowhere and um, I read it like four or five months ago and I, or maybe six. It was in the summer sometime. And I was blown away. I was just like, this is going to make my top 10. It's going to make my top 10 of the year. This is such a good book. And usually Dean Koontz books don't make my top 10s, even though I own every Dean Koontz book that he's written. And I love him. I, he's never made a top 10. But he did with this one. Watchers. There we go. We'll put that right here. <clears throat> my second honorable mention is James Rollins' The Devil Colony. I just read this a few months ago, and I was like, everything I just said about Dean Koontz, Watchers, The Devil Colony does in spades, does it even slightly better, 
and we get weird conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiratorial, conspiracy theory. Oh Lord, I'll edit most of that cluster of a word salad right out. But okay, James Rollins, Devil Colony offers you everything that Watchers offered you, but with a lot of conspiracy theory. And I like this one specifically because most of the conspiracy theory stuff, the Da Vinci Code-esque things that are going on in this book, take place in Utah, take place at the college campus where I went to college. So that added a little bit extra to me, and that's probably why it propelled it into the honorable mentions of my favorite reads of the year. Okay, then my third honorable mention is Stephen Brust's The... The uh, Magister, oh, what is this one? Oh, The Baron of Magister Valley. You'd think I'd know the title of an honorable mention. This is part of uh, his Vladimir Taltos sort of Dragoria realm fantasy series. He's got like the Vladimir Taltos, the Phoenix Guards, a whole bunch of different series of fantasy novels set in the same world. This is The Baron of Magister Valley, is a part of that fantasy world. But it's sort of a loose take upon the um, Count of Monte Cristo. It's sort of like a loosey-goosey retelling of the Count of Monte Cristo, in but within Stephen Brust's own fantasy world. It was dynamite. I loved this so much. Um, everything, and, and Stephen Brust's writing is so crisp and on point, and his prose is so witty, and his characters are so quirky and unique. This was just a magnificent novel. That's number three. Number four... My fourth honorable mention before we get to the top 10 is Sharp's Tiger by Bernard Cornwell. I love Bernard Cornwell's historical novels. I love the Richard Sharp series. This is book number one in the Richard Sharp series. This is a reread for me. I read it about 22 years ago, probably in the year 1999. I don't know. Two, I don't, I'm not good with math. It's 2023 right now. I read this in 99. That would have meant I read this 21 years. I don't know. Anyway, it's, it is signed by... Uh... So these books are set in uh, the Napoleonic War era. This is the first... I think the Richard Sharp Sharp's Rifles series has 22 some odd books in it. This is the first book. This is when Richard Sharp is just a young British officer in serving in the British Army in India before the Napoleonic Wars. It's the first Richard Sharp adventure. I love it. Sharp's Tiger. That is my honorable mentions. Let's get to the top 10. So the top 10, we're going to be starting out with some more historical novels. And this, I don't know how this one crept into my top 10, but it did. This is a reread of a, of a series that I, I love. And this is book number two in Diana Gabaldon's Outlander series. And this is Voyager. It's probably my favorite book in the series. I think... Outlander, book one, is my least favorite. But this was the book that sold me on the series, and I'm rereading the series. So I read this ages, again, probably 21 odd years. I mean, I read, I probably read this in the mid 90s, so it's again about a 21 years ago. I didn't do math at all. Anyway, Voyager is the second book in. The series, and this is the one that sold me on the Diana Gabaldon series. Uh, Outlander, I, it was iffy. I was like, I don't know if I'm a, I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing this. But then I read this one, and then I became a huge, massive fan of the Outlander series, and I just reread Voyager um, this year, and it leapt into, it leapt up into the top ten. I was like, this is a dynamite book. There's a reason why I love the Outlander series, and it's because of this book. It's, this is the book that sold me on it. It's great, and if you don't know what Outlander is. Well, you can watch the television show, because the television show is pretty dope, too. Or, if you want to read the books, it's about a woman from the 1940s who gets who goes into a stone circle in Scotland and gets whisked away into, into time. No, it's a Back to the Future kind of a thing. It's She goes to the 1700s in Scotland. She goes back in time. I'm going to end the description of that book before I get up even further. Okay. My, number nine in the top ten was The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. 
one of my favorite novels of all time. If you've watched my top 100 favorite novels of all time, you know this one is in it. This is the third reread. I read this for the third time this year, and again, it stands up as one of my favorite novels of all time. It's about a it's about a dude who goes and solves a murder in an Italian abbey that's up in the mountains. I'm assuming it's the uh, the uh, Alps of Ital Italian Alps, which I've been to, by the way. Um, and it's just a great gothic mystery novel set in the 1300s, uh, 13th century or the 11th century. A lot of mid that's just mid mid age middle age medieval times. Okay, then now this book really came to me by number eight here really caught me by surprise because I thought there's no way this was going to make a top 10 of anybody's lists. Um, but my reread, because I read this once before when it first came out in the mid 90s or the early 90s when I was young, and that was Terry Brooks running with the demon. This is uh, just one of the very, very prequel prequels to the Shannara saga. This, what, I loved everything about this book, and it just came, when I read it, I wasn't that, I was like, when I read it, when it first came out, I was just like, yeah, it's all right, it's all right, you know what I mean, it's okay. But my reread, I was like, damn, this thing is dope. This is kind of like Terry Brooks, the, the master of high fantasy, going back and trying to do like something that Stephen King would do, and the dude, he knocked it out of the park. This is a really great coming-of-age horror novel. I don't know how else to explain it. And it's got a great cover by Gerald Brom. And I love this old classic 1980s horror novel sort of vibe it's got. Leapt up into my top ten, and that was unexpected. Now, another, uh, this is a fantasy novel. When I reread it, I knew I was going to love it because it is my favorite of the Robert Jordan Wheel of Time books, and that is The Shadow Rising. This is book four. In the Wheel of Time. I reread this. And this is one of the books that I've probably read about five or six times. And so even a reread, it's still going to hold up as a top ten book. Um, even after the fifth time. I mean, I don't think I need to really go into a whole lot of detail about The Shadow Rising or The Wheel of Time. It's just my favorite novel in The Wheel of Time. And I just happened to reread it in 2023. And I loved it. Another reread. Okay. This one... It's just one of my favorite science fiction novels of all time, and that is Otherland, City of Golden Shadow by Tad Williams. I did reread this. This is another book that I've probably read five or six times. In fact, the whole Otherland series I've got up here somewhere, I think. Um, anyway, my, my Tad Williams books are on this shelf, but I've been covering, been covering them with, anyway. Book number one in the Otherland series. Uh, this is a great science fiction uh, saga. Four books in the Otherland series. City of Golden Shadow is book number one. Sort of like a virtual reality, far future, um, very high tech, really cool mystery novel set amongst some great science fiction ideas. Book, where are we? Are we at the top five yet? I think this is the top five. The top five gets started in high fashion, folks. Um, and that is Ken Follett's The Evening and the Morning. And this is, uh, let's see, this is book, no, this is not the one. Let me go get the one. This is not the one that I read. And I'm back. The Armor of Light is the one I was I, I needed to get. Okay, The Armor of Light. This is the new Ken Follett novel. This one came out a couple of years ago and made my top ten a couple of years ago. I'll have, that's another thing I'm going to have to edit out. Okay, The Armor of Light is part of uh, Ken Follett's Pillars of the Earth series. This is the fifth book in the Pillars of the Earth series. Um, chronologically, it's the fifth book. Chronologically, the evening, the uh, morning and the evening, and the evening and the morning is the uh, first one. This is the most recent one, and anything Ken Follett puts out is likely to make a top ten list for me. I apologize for the confusion there. I held up the wrong book. I had to go get the right book. But anyway, I might just have to start the whole video over again. Um, uh, we're, but we're too deep into it now. We're too deep into it now, as your mom would say. Okay, James Cavell's Clogan, Clogan, a Durfee rant, a, an epic Durfee rant is about to happen, folks. 
let me see if I can just anger management myself back into a state of being where I can finish this video. Okay. Shogun by James Clavell. This is a reread. This is a book that I read every couple of years. I probably read it 10 times. It is one of my favorite novels of all time. I reread it again for the channel, did a massive review of it. Shogun about the 16th century sailor, John Blackthorn. I hope that's his name. And he, he gets shipwrecked in Japan, and it's like a, like a fish-out-of-water story. It's like a dude landing on an alien planet and trying to figure things out. One of my favorite novels of all time is my um, fourth favorite read. Okay, let's get to it. The Silmarillion. Specifically, the Andy Circus narration of The Silmarillion. I was walking, I, I walk for an hour or two every morning. I put my headphones on, I listen to a book on tape or Audible. I don't think it's tape anymore. Not even CD. It's just streaming out of the, in oblivion. I don't know where it comes from. Audible.com has some sort of wizardry where I can listen to books. And this one is narrated by Andy Serkis. And Andy Serkis is the dude who played Gollum in the Lord of the Rings movies and the Hobbit movies. He does such a great job of narrating this book. A book that normally, I, whenever I tried to read it, it was a slog. It was a painful... Oh my God, listening to Andy Serkis' narration of this turned this book into a piece of magical artwork that I was just like mesmerized by every word. And then I was, I was extending my walks. Normally I walk an hour. I was extending my walks for two hours just to keep listening to the book. So The Silmarillion, specifically Andy Serkis' voice narration, is my third favorite book of 2023. And following on the heels of that, I also listened to... The Fellowship of the Ring, Andy Circus voice narration. And this is my second favorite read of 2023, The Fellowship of the Ring, just because of my walks in the morning, listening to Andy Circus narrate this wonderful book, which is one of my... And even, even had I not listened to that narration and just reread the book the old-fashioned way with my, you know, with my eyeballs, um, this one would have also come in it would have finished in the top 10 for sure even without the narration however the narration by andy circus vaulted the fellowship of the ring into my second favorite read of 2023 andy circus just turns everything that he touches especially the tolkien language the pacing of the story the character voices the different accents the different things that he does with the characters and all of that just absolutely beautiful beautiful piece of artwork the voice narration and thank you Andy Circus for doing that for us oh my favorite read of 2023 whatever shall it be and it is from one of my favorite no it is from my single most favorite mystery writer of all time my number one read of 2023 came from Dennis Lehane, and it is Small Mercies, the great, great, noirish, hard-boiled, gritty, realistic, fantastically written mystery novel set in the 1970s in Boston, Massachusetts. Nobody writes mysteries better than Dennis Lehane. If I was to write mystery novels myself, I only wish I could be at this guy's level. I mean, in fact, whenever I read this guy's writing, I'm just like, I should just give up. I should just give up on my own writing because I'll never be able to match what people like Dennis Lehane are doing with their prose and their storytelling and, and their thematical elements and their character work and everything and, and just the atmosphere that they create and the lines of and the poignant memorable lines of dialogue and exposition that go into something like small mercies it's just absolutely a work of literary art and brilliance and that is why dennis lehane is my number one read of 2023 well-deserved fantastic book it's uh it just it came out in 2023 this is the first time I've read it. I know I will be rereading this multiple times before I'm dead, um, which will probably be 
in another 17,000 years. Because I am immortal. Um, Small Mercies, Dennis Lehane, my favorite read of 2023. And holy shit, do I have a lot of editing to do on this video to make it even semi-watchable for anybody out there on the internet. So anyway, um, thanks for uh, putting up with uh, another trash video by Brian Lee Durfee.